Uh, Mark Singleis from the Albany Times Union. Question for Caitlin. Uh, when you're playing in a new venue like this, like Albany, for the first time, mm -hmm. um, what does it mean to you to play in front of people who maybe have never seen you play in person, mm -hmm. including young girls? Yeah. That's something like we were talking about. Like We love playing in front of our home crowd, and it's been really special all year long to play in front of 15,000 people every single game. But when you get to go on the road, like it kind of takes you back to see how many Iowa fans there are across the country. And that's kind of been the biggest thing for us all year, no matter where we've been able to go, whether it was on the East Coast, whether it was, you know, Nebraska, anywhere, like we had great crowds. And I think we're going to see the same thing here um, this weekend. So I think it's just special. Um, it's not anything you ever take for granted. And it definitely helps. It adds a little motivation and adds a little boost. And, you know, they rally around you, whether you're on offense or defense. So it's, it's super special. Uh, Doug Feinberg, the AP. Question for actually all three of you. Caitlin, just can you talk about the growth of women's basketball when you were a freshman and you mm -hmm. were playing in front of cardboard cutouts mm -hmm. to now when there's 15,000 people? Mm -hmm. And for Gabby and Kate, what is it like when you, I'm guessing, have seen her in commercials? Is it funny the first time? Is it cute? Do you make fun of her? Like, what's the, the opinion when you actually see her <laughs> on a State Farm or a Gatorade or any other commercials? Yeah, it's, it's been cool to see, like, the evolution of crowds since my first year here, obviously playing in Carver in front of just cardboard cutouts and our family, then going down to the bubble um, and really playing in front of no one. There was, I think, limited fans um, when we got to the Sweet 16 and played inside of the Alamo Dome, I believe. But um, And then the next two years kind of got crazier and crazier, and then obviously this year has really taken off, and it's really hard to get a ticket to one of our games. So I don't think it's anything you ever take for granted. Um, I hope you know it's going to keep growing across the board, especially when I'm done playing here in college. And um, you're not just seeing it with Iowa, you're seeing it all across the country. It's hard to get in the doors to women's basketball games, and that's exactly how it should be. That's how it should have been for a really long time. The game is great. There's so many stars in our game. Um, there's a lot of young talent, um, people playing the game the right way. Um, and I think that's what attracts people to come and watch. You know, They play with passion, they play with emotion, they're fiery, um, they can score the basketball, they play good defense, um, and, and games are close. The parity is getting better and better in women's basketball, and you know people love that. So. Howard. I like seeing oh, her in the commercials. Yep. Hold I on, like please. Go ahead. Go ahead, Gabby. What? Oh, go, go ahead. Go ahead. I like when she has her makeup all done and her <laughs> hair all done. <laughs> um, I mean, sometimes it plays like 10 times in a row when you're watching a game, but I like seeing her. The Big Ten oh, Network yeah. does do that. We were just sitting in the hotel, me and Caitlin are roommates, and we were sitting in the hotel last night, <laughs> and the State Farm ad just pops up, and we just look at each other and started <laughs> laughing. So, I mean, I just think it's really cool, and I mean, I don't know, it just brings more awareness to women's basketball and it brings more awareness to not only her but our entire team in Iowa, so I, I think it's awesome. Go ahead. Howard Megdahl at the next. You, that, there we go. Howard Megdahl at the next. Good to see all three of you. I'm hoping to uh, take each in turn, Caitlin, Gabby, Kate. Regardless, um, it, reaching your goals this year you're going to be in a position where it's dwindling to the last few games. And I'm wondering how each of you take a moment, if you do take a moment, to kind of take it all in prior to each of these. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say for myself, like the, the moment that I take everything in is like I just take a deep breath um, before the national anthem and kind of soak in the environment and the crowd. And then you get competitive for 40 minutes and enjoy that. And then when I walk off the court, I try to take as much as time as possible to sign as many autographs and whatever. and you know, kind of soak in the environment and enjoy that because, you know, you don't really know how many games you have left at this point. You know, we just had a practice, we play tomorrow, and that's really all you're guaranteed. You're obviously trying to go out there and win and fight for another day. And I think that's for all three of us. Like, we don't want this to end. We love coming to practice. We love playing games with each other. It's, you want to soak it in and keep extending um, it out. Yeah, I would just say, just to piggyback on that, obviously you want to play as long as you can, but I think just I'll look at them sometimes and just be like, wow, like this is almost over, but think about all the memories that we've made together on and off the court. And I think that's the most important thing. That's what we'll remember forever is just the people that we've been around, the coaches, the other players, and just what we've been able to do together. Yeah, I just want to echo what they've said, but also like I think that's what makes March Madness so fun is when you have seniors that you know feel like they have nothing to lose that's when you see buzzer beaters and game winners and things like that and that's why it's so fun and we obviously have five seniors on our team and so we want to extend our time as long as possible because we do have a lot of fun playing and we love each other and uh, yeah really I take my moments to soak it all in is right before tip I just kind of look around to see how many people are there and just think wow like I can't believe I'm in this position I feel extremely grateful. 
Uh, Gr <laughs> Griffin Haas here, uh, News 10 ABC in Albany. Uh, Caitlin, we were able to go to a local practice with an AAU team, middle school age girls, uh, here in Albany, and almost all of them were wearing Iowa 22 Caitlin Clark shirts or mm -hmm. jerseys. What does that mean to you to be able to give, provide a role model for especially young girls to be able to identify with across the country? Yeah, I think that's the best part about what I get to do. Um, you know, I grew up having those role models and aspiring to be where I am today. And um, it's super special to see your impact, not only in the state of Iowa, but across the country. And I think that's been the biggest thing for us this year is it hasn't only been in Iowa. Obviously, Iowa has supported us through and through. But no matter where we go, there's so many people supporting us and wanting us to, to succeed. And um, to be able to have that impact on the next generation is really special. And you know, you just hope they, you know, dream and, and aspire to, you know, be like you one day and, you know, chase after all their dreams. Hey guys, Claire Hanna with TSN. This is more for Gabby and Kate, but your coach was just in here talking about how competitive Caitlin is at practice, that sometimes she has to issue her technical fouls. <laughs> Can you just give examples of that competitiveness? That but hasn't then happened in a while. <laughs> she, <laughs> but she also mentioned how loose Caitlin is in the locker room and just maybe how playful she is too. Let's start with Gabby, go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's good that she has that balance. Obviously, when she steps on the court, she's going to show the passion and just the fiery attitude that she has just because she loves the game so much and she wants to win. She hates losing, so that's where that comes into play, the technicals and just, I don't know, our managers are our refs at practice, and so that can kind of get out of hand They're sometimes. They're horrible at refing. <laughs> but then, like, she's so goofy and fun and loving in the locker room and just on, off the court. So I think it's good that she has that balance. Kate? Yeah, I agree with everything Gabby said. I mean, I, I can understand her frustration because our managers are not good refs at all. <laughs> so, um, but, yeah, it's, it's fun. And Coach Bluter, I mean, that, I think it's just – a good coaching tactic you know it's just like put it like she would do that to me I've gotten a technical as well so she's not alone but you know it just puts us in check and she's just holding us accountable because you can't do that in games and you will get a technical and put your team in a bad position so um, but it is it's fun whenever we can all go into the locker room if you get into like a competitive little tiff or whatever and then in the locker room you're just fun and loving right away again so uh, we can have that balance and uh, you know, know that we love each other at the end of the day. It doesn't really matter what happens out on the court. Nancy Armour, USA Today. Caitlin, um, Lisa was talking about confidence, and she had mentioned on uh, the other night about uh, Hannah needing to be more aggressive, and you've talked a couple of times this season about how special she's yeah. going to be, how good of a player she can be. How, how important is that for you to say those things and for you to have those conversations with her mm -hmm. in order to build up her confidence and be the player that you know she can be? Yeah, I think that's the biggest thing with Han is just going up to her and giving her those words of affirmation and telling her how much we believe in her, whether it's me, whether it's them too, whether it's her other post players that she works with every single day. Um, I think that's the biggest thing for all of them is just knowing that their point guard believes in them and knows that they can rise to the occasion. And we've all seen what Hannah can do. You know, she put up 47 points. You know, she can absolutely dominate. In my opinion, she runs the floor better than anybody in the country. Um, but I think that is the biggest thing is like saying that right to her face and knowing how much I believe it. she knows how much I believe in her and how much the rest of the team believes in her because um, when she's playing her best basketball, it adds a whole other dimension to our team. But yeah, I think that's been the thing for us all year is just continue to build her up, continue to build our posts up because, you know, they kind of had to play behind the shadow of Monica, but they aren't Monica. They can do a lot of things that Monica couldn't, and, you know, they don't need to be Monica. That's not what we have needed all year, and they've done a really tremendous job of, you know, rising to the occasion, and I think Hannah specifically has done just that and uh, improved her game in so many areas. Row three. Yeah, Michael Vopel from ESPN.com. Caitlin, I know your focus is on this, but there's been mm -hmm. some off-court things with the mm -hmm. Ice Cube offer, uh, yeah. with the big three, and then with the invitation, which I know you probably don't – you hope that invitation doesn't happen because mm -hmm. you want to be uh, with your team in, in Cleveland. But I wondered if, uh, if just your thoughts on those things that are sort of happening a little bit off-court. Mm -hmm. I know, like I said, your focus is on this, but there's been a lot of chatter about those things. Yeah, to be honest, I found out about the big three thing at the same exact time you all did. Um, and my main focus is on just playing basketball. I think that's the biggest thing. And like you said, uh, USA basketball is my – you know, that's your dream. You always want to grow up and be on the Olympic team. but. Uh, lucky for me, I have the opportunity of possibly not doing that because, you know, I want to be at the Final Four playing basketball with my team. But if not, that's where I'll be. And um, 
people that are on that roster are people that I idolize and have idolized growing up. So uh, just to be extended a camp invite is something you have to be proud of and celebrate and, and enjoy. So, um, but more than anything, my focus is on winning these two games, and that's how, exactly how it should be. And you know, I honestly don't talk about those things with really anybody. You know, I have other people that deal with it, and they haven't said a word to me about it. And my main focus is on this team and, you know, helping us find a way to beat Colorado and hopefully win one, another one after that. Go. Marissa Jack, Spectrum News. Caitlin, this is for you. None of us here can imagine what you're going through and just the fanfare of all of this. Mm -hmm. There has to be some downsides to that as well, though. I think of the interaction that everybody saw with you and your dad last week. That yeah. would have never happened if it wasn't you. What mm -hmm. are some of the downsides? What's the toughest part of this for you? Well, I think the first thing is I was never talking to my dad. I don't know why people thought that. Um, and my dad is my biggest supporter. He's literally my best friend, and he was my first ever basketball coach um, and somebody that has, like, always been there. And people probably think my dad's super competitive because I am, but he's never been that way. He's, like, a chill, constant person in my life that I can always rely on. And um, I think it's kind of been the same story for me over the course of the two years is, like, I know people are always watching. I know eyeballs are always on me. And you know, that's kind of what happens when you are in the spotlight. And um, it's not anything you shy away from. I think it's, you know, I'm competitive, I'm fiery, that's how it is. And, um, you know, I think that's what has brought me a lot of success. But I think at the same time, being able to channel that and use it in the best way. And um, yeah, I mean, my dad's like one, literally one of my biggest supporters. And he honestly hasn't missed one single college basketball game of mine. And for that, I'm forever thankful. But um, yeah, I think our team has always talked about it. There's always people watching. There's always young girls with eyeballs on you. So you want to, you know, always have be on your best behavior, but also play with that competitive fire and passion that you always have that has brought our team so much success. And I think that's exactly what we do. Right here. Erica L. Ayala with CBSSports.com. Gabby, I'd like to start with you. My question is, uh, Caitlin, along with Juju and Daisha, are players that have brought us back to women's basketball history. How have the, the performances from this season in particular changed your knowledge of and your kind of perspective of women's basketball? And then for Caitlin, for you being one of those players, how has the interactions with some of those legends of the game impacted or maybe given you a thought of how you would like to uh, approach the next person to reach a record? Yeah, I think just there's so much talent in women's basketball right now and what they've been able to do on the court day in and day out, it, it's attracting more people to come want to watch, fill the stands. I mean, we sold out Carver. She's doing that on a daily basis, which is crazy to think about. Like, you don't see that all the time. But like she said, there's so much young talent as well. And I think it's just growing and growing. And I mean, who wouldn't want to watch, you know? I, it's it's so much fun. We play with so much joy. We're starting to see more passion from women. I mean, it's just it's just going to continue to grow, and there's going to be more people, more eyes on us, and more people who want to fill the stands and come see us play. I think for myself, it's been really cool. Um, I think specifically, like, Lynette Woodard was able to come to our senior night and be in Carver Hawkeye Arena, um, somebody that maybe wasn't always given all her flowers, but was really like a pioneer in our game and did so much for our game. And uh, to be able to share that with her was really special. And, you know, as I've been able to break whatever record it is, it's been cool to have people that I've idolized and, you know, who I've aspired to be in my life uh, reach out and congratulate me. And like you said, I hope I get to do that for the next person. You know, somebody's going to come along and break my records, and that's exactly how it should be, you know. That's kind of the point of a record. Other people chase them down and break them. And also our game's evolving so much, and there's so much talent. There's so much parity. And um, that's why people want to watch. That's why people want to tune in. So um, I think I'm just forever grateful. And you know, the next person that comes along to, to break mine, I'll be right there supporting them. And hopefully I can see it in person. Right here. And then after this, we have one last one. Go ahead. Eddie Robert with the Associated Press. Um, Caitlin, as the kind of face of women's college basketball, I was wondering, who else in women's college basketball would you pay to go see play? And is there a player or two that you think are flying oh under the radar that should get more flowers that is currently playing in this game, other than players on your own team? There would be so many I would pay to go see. I would say Juju probably right now. That's who I'd pay and go see. But also Hannah Hidalgo at Notre Dame. I think she's been tremendous. And um, I think Hannah's kind of flown under the radar a little bit. Um, man, I'm trying to think who else. I mean, there's so many good players. Madison Booker. Um, there's just so much young talent, and I think that's the coolest part of the game. 
um, is just where the game is going, how much young talent there is, but also like they, they can't be one and done. So they get to stay and play this game for four years. Like how exciting is that for women's basketball fans to know our game is in really great hands and the talent level across the board for maybe even teams that maybe haven't consistently been in the final four. The, the parity is amazing. And um, I think that's what's going to help viewership numbers grow too. But um, you know, I love women's basketball. I'll pay any price to get in the door and watch talent a across the board. That's what makes the game so fun, and that's what people do for our team. So I would totally repay the favor. Last one. Thank you. Howie Kassoy, New York Post, for everybody. Um, first off, I mean, this is a time of year you want to be playing your best. I'm curious, first, what you take from the last three games, which have all been a little bit of a struggle in their own way, and then also how this tournament run and the season as a whole maybe has been a little bit different with the level of spotlight and expectation versus the past couple of years. Kate, you want to start? Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, we're excited for our future. I mean, we look back at our previous games and the previous year just to learn for what's to come. But, uh, I mean, West Virginia posed its own problems in its own way. But, I mean, they're a really good defensive team. And, uh, you know, I think the pressure and what they did to us is definitely going to help us in the future. And um, Colorado is a really good team. And, you know, they're, they've got a really good inside presence while they've got shooters surrounding um, number 21 down there. So um, we're just really excited for what's to come. And, I mean, the season – has been really cool with all the spotlight and everything. I think it's just you have to be in this position to grow the game. And um, with all the attention Caitlin gets, you know, it shines the light on all of us. Like I said earlier, it shines the light on every single one of us and um, Iowa as a program. So um, while it's it's been, you know, a little different with cameras literally everywhere all the time, it's, it's also really cool at the same time. So, uh, you know, we've been enjoying it. and. Uh, as the season's dwindling down, you know, we're just trying to enjoy all these last moments together and have a lot of fun playing basketball together. Gabby? Yeah, I would say, too, um, this year compared to last other years, we've had more people pack opposing arenas as well. So, like, the attention that she's bringing in and the attention that we get in opposing arenas is, is amazing. I mean, we're seeing Hawk fans no matter where we go. We could go across the country. We saw Hawk fans at Rutgers, which is not – an easy flight, um, but I think that's kind of where it's gone this year for us when we've been playing um, not only at home but in away arenas as well. And like Kate said, we're just trying to, you know, play as long as we can and just enjoy every moment that we have with each other on and off the court. I would say the course, the lot you mentioned the last three games. I think the biggest thing for us is like, I don't feel like any of those three were complete games, but I feel like that also is like. That, to me, that's a positive. We found ways to win all three of those. Um, Nebraska, to me, Nebraska was playing the best basketball in the Big Ten tournament. They were playing great basketball. Jazz Shelley was playing tremendous. Markowski was playing great. Potts was playing great. Um, they really gave us everything we could handle, and we weathered the storm, and we still found a way to win. Um, and the same with West Virginia. We didn't really – our offense wasn't really clicking in the way that it should, um, and we still found ways to win. We played great defense. Um, and to me, I don't see that as a negative. I see that as a positive. I see that as – you know, Iowa doesn't have to rely on scoring, you know, 90 points a game to win every single game. We can find other ways to win. It's okay if we have a bad half. Not everything's going to be perfect. It's going to be okay if we have a bad quarter. Um, so I think it's just looking at everything in a positive light. Yeah, there was a million ways we could have got better from those three games. But at the same time, you know, to me, that, that just shows the growth of our team and the growth of our program over the course of the last year is be gritty, be resilient, and find ways to win. And that's really all that matters when you're playing in the NCAA tournament.